Yeah, uh, people made the point that Blender's game engine was nice to quickly whip something up mm -hmm. and just have test, have a yeah. prototype. Uh, yeah, I, I could see a point of that because you had um, logic bricks where you had like inputs, logic operators, and outputs. And you could just wire things together and you could create quite complex logic mm. uh, processing, you know, keyboard and mouse inputs. Um, Mouse? Yeah. No, mouse? I don't know if mouse was supported. I think you had to program in Python to get mouse. Oh, okay, sure. I, I made I made a like an FPS prototype in that, but um, I made a couple of games, uh, small like games that never got anywhere in, mm. in Blender Game Engine. And then I when I found Godot, I was like, whoa, that's so much better. I'm never touching Blender Game Engine again. <laughs> Yeah, so Godot has a very clear structure. Mm -hmm. Everything is a node. Yeah. And a node can have an underlying structure of nodes, and okay. then it's called a scene. Right, OK. Your game is the so-called a scene tree. There is one node at top, and everything descends from that. You have a hierarchical, hierarchical, hierarchy. <laughs> you have a tree. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's a tree. So you have a root node. Uh, which I believe is your viewport, your main viewport, so mm -hmm. the thing that renders things in, in the game window or in your screen. And everything is down from there, and you can organize this hierarchy however you want. And yeah, it's just very like simple. Mm. So when you're writing games in Gido, what are you actually writing it in? I use GDScript, mm -hmm. which is Godot's own programming language. It's okay. heavily based on Python. But it's very well optimized for for the game engine. It takes a little bit of getting used to because it, mm. it's not exactly Python and it has lots of unique things. Many people were like, why do you invent a new programming language for this game engine? Why not mm -hmm. use something that exists already? And they explained that it nothing that exists just it could be so well integrated and be as Painless to use as mm -hmm. GDScript. And really, GDScript is very nice to use. Like when I see how much code you need to put into Unity to make a simplest thing, because you have all this C sharp boilerplate mm -hmm. stuff and all those namespaces. Yeah. <laughs> I love C sharp. And then, in, then in uh, then in GDScript, you have two lines of code and it does the same thing. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now and it does definitely have a. Python inspiration here, but there are things that obviously don't exist in Python, like constants, for example, where in Python it's like, it's a constant if you don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> if you yourself regard it as a constant, then it's a constant. Yeah, yeah. But like, besides that, like, this would be a pretty easy language to at least wrap your head around the language structure. Obviously, the way the language works and the, uh, how would you say it? The, the word, the the details. Oh, you're going to say details. I can't think of words right now. The like intricate details of language and the way it functions at a lower level would be much different. But at least learning the the way to write it seems like it wouldn't take that long, to be honest. Yeah, I like that they chose Python's mm, syntax as a basis because Python is very stripped down. Mm -mm. It doesn't require you to put a colon at ev at the end of every line. It like gets rid of a lot of pointless braces and <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, I like that. It's it's Java. it's stripped down. It's yeah. <laughs> or wait, what is my first programming schema? language? Schema. 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 It's like uh, parentheses oh, everywhere. Yeah, the, um, I know what you talk. Schema. <laughs> um, the uh, Lisp dialect. Yeah. Oh, Lisp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there you have more syntax. Then code. Yeah, you want to have your, bra your you like brackets. How do you feel like brackets? <laughs> have some brackets. Yo, dog, I heard you like brackets, so I put <laughs> brackets in your brackets. <laughs> no, uh, Python is definitely like. Uh, I like Python. I know Python gets a lot of shit from people who like to complain about things they don't understand, but like the structure of Python is really nice and i can understand why the hardcore python guys really like the language obviously there are other reasons why people like it as well but like just that 
just that by itself is honestly already enough of a reason to at least use it with like use it as that project and maybe adapt it to other things as well. Yeah. I never got deep into Python. I made some custom add-on add-on. Actually it's just a script for Blender to do some things mm -hmm. ideas for work. But uh, I'm um, at this point, it's like if I have some complex program, a problem I need to solve and I need a graphics user interface, I think I would just use Godot and GDScript script <laughs> because you can make tools in it. It mm. has so much built in. Uh, you can, you know, process files, you can load open, you have file dialogues, you can do networking very easily, audio, video, like, yeah, it's just... Um, a nice framework for making interactive applications, not just games. And being a uh, a game engine, it will use your GPU, unlike uh, certain versions of GTK that didn't use your GPU <laughs> until very recently. As in, oh man, now, really? yeah, GTK didn't use your GPU until oh. GTK four. That's why it was useless for game uh, developing games. I think that oh, was right. like a way to hack it in, but it didn't have, like, it got Vulkan support in GTK4. No one's going to use it to make games, because why would you use GTK to make a game? But, like, it's there. Yeah, it's it's not for, I don't know. But no, I, I do know okay, a couple of, I, did, um, I didn't even know. There are a couple of projects I've of seen something. that do use Godot to actually um build the, just build a general app, and that's cool. Like, it, I... I it, it makes sense why you might want to use one of the, you know, frameworks that are designed around building apps. But if there's something that Godot does for you, or you just want to approach it in a different way, it seems like an interesting way to approach it. Yeah, I I guess, you know, uh, it's one of the few tools I I know. So everything looks like a ham, like a yeah, nail, yeah. because th that's my hammer. Mm -hmm. Of course, people who know how to make, you know, graphics user interfaces in Python or whatever, they will use that, mm -hmm. and that's that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, I I learned Godot, and as a side side effect, I I can wield that to do something else in games, some mm -hmm. extra tools. I was thinking about, for example, uh, making a like a remote for my stream setup mm. because you can very easily run your game in a web or in, on on mobile yeah and i could have just some touch buttons in the slider and i could use godot networking to run a, another um godot game mm -hmm. godot game an application on my desk that will receive that over wi-fi and run some bash commands to like send MIDI messages or OSC. Actually, Godot can send out MIDI on its own. It's just to control, you know, OBS or things. Yeah, OBS does have a... a it's a bit flaky, but there is a um, OBS WebSocket plugin. I don't know if it's working right now, but... I tried to get it to work, mm. and I couldn't. Yeah, I didn't think so. Like, it works Maybe like a very specific fault. version, and, like... But it's, it's very poorly maintained, so it'll usually be a couple of versions behind... And yeah, 